Chapter 3 How Dorothy Saved the Scarecrow When Dorothy was left alone, she began to feel hungry, so she went to the cupboard and cut herself some bread, which she spread with butter. She gave some to Toto, and taking a pail from the shelf, she carried it down to the little brook and filled it with clear, sparkling water. Toto ran over to the trees and began to bark at the birds that were sitting there. Dorothy went to get him and saw such delicious fruits hanging from the tr trees that she began to gather some of it. Finding it was just what she needed to have for her breakfast. When she went back to the house and having helped herself and Toto to a good drink of cool water, she set out to making ready for the journey to the City of Emeralds. Dorothy had only one dress, but that happened to be clean and it was hanging on a peg beside her bed. It was gingham with checks of white and blue and all the blue had somewhat faded with many washings, it was still a pretty frock. The girl washed herself carefully, dressed herself in clean gingham, and tied her pink sun bonnet on her head. She took a little basket and filled it with bread from the cupboard, laying a white cloth over top. Then she looked down at her feet and noticed how old and worn her shoes were. They surely will never do for a long journey, Toto, she said. And Toto looked up into her face with his little black eyes and wagged his tail to show he knew what she meant. At that moment, Dorothy saw lying on the table the silver shoes that had belonged to the Wicked Witch of the East. I wonder if they will fit me, she said to Toto. They would be just the thing to take on a long walk, for they would not wear out. She took off her old leather shoes and tried on the silver ones which fit her as if well as if they had been made for her. Finally, she picked up her basket. Come along, Toto, she said. We will go to the Emerald City and ask the great Oz how to get back to Kansas again. She closed the door, locked it, and put the key carefully in the pocket of her dress. And so, with Toto trotting alongside soberly behind her, she started on her journey. There were several roads nearby, but it did not take her long to find the one paved with yellow bricks. Within a short time, she was walking briskly towards the Emerald City, her silver shoes twinkling merrily on the hard yellow roadbed. The sun shone bright and the birds sang sweetly, and Dorothy did not feel nearly as bad as you might think a little girl would who had been suddenly whisked away from her own country and set down in the midst of a strange land. She was surprised as she walked along to see how pretty the country was about her. There were neat fences at the side of the road painted a dainty blue color, and beyond them were fields of grain and vegetables in abundance. Evidently, the munchkins were good farmers and able to raise large crops. Once in a while she would pass a house and the people came out to look at her and bow low as she went by, for everyone knew she had been the means of destroying the wicked witch and setting them free from bondage. The houses of the munchkins were odd-looking dwellings, for each was round, with a big dome for a roof. All were painted blue, for it was the country of blue color that was their favorite. Toward evening, when Dorothy was tired with her long walk and began to wonder where she would pass the night, she came upon a house that was rather larger than the rest. On the green lawn before it, Many men and women were dancing. Five little fiddlers played loud as possibly, and the people were laughing and singing, while a big table nearby was loaded with delicious fruits, nuts, pies and cakes, and many other good things to eat. The people greeted Dorothy kindly and invited her to supper and to pass the night with them, for this was the home of one of the richest munchkins in the land, and his friends were gathering with him in celebration of their freedom from the bondage of the wicked witch. Dorothy ate a hearty supper and was waited upon by the rich munchkin himself, whose name was Bog. Then she sat upon a settee and watched the people dance. When Bog saw her silver shoes, he said, You must be a great sorceress. Why? asked the girl. Because you wear silver shoes and you have killed the wicked witch. Besides, you have white in your frock, and only witches and sorceresses wear white. But my dress is blue and white checked, said Dorothy, smoothing out the wrinkles in it. It is kind of you to wear it, said Bog. Blue is the color of the munchkins, and white is the color of the witch. So we know you are a friendly witch. 
Dorothy didn't know what to say to this, for all the people seemed to think of her as a witch, and she knew very well she was only an ordinary little girl who had come by the, by chance of a cyclone into a strange land. When she had tired watching the dancing, Bog led her into the house, where he gave her a room with a pretty little bed. The sheets were made of blue cloth, and Dorothy slept soundly in them till morning, with Toto curled up on the blue rug beside her. She ate a hearty breakfast and watched a wee munchkin baby who played with Toto and pulled at his tail and cooed and laughed in a way that greatly amused Dorothy. Toto was a fine curiosity to all the people, for they had never seen a dog before. "'How far is it to the Emerald City?' the girl asked. Oh, "'I do not know,' answered Bog gravely, "'for I have never been there. It is better for people to keep away from Oz, unless you have business with him. But it is a long way to the Emerald City, and it will take you many days. The country here is rich and pleasant, but you will pass through rough and dangerous places before you reach the end of your journey.' This worried Dorothy a little, but she knew that the only the only great odds would help her get to Kansas again, so she bravely resolved not to turn back. She bade farewell to her good friends, and again started along the road of yellow brick. When she had gone several miles, she thought she would stop and rest, and so climbed up on top of a fence beside the road and sat down. There was a great cornfield beyond the fence, and not far away she saw a scarecrow placed high on a pole to keep the birds from the ripe corn. Dorothy leaned her chin upon her hand and gazed thoughtfully at the scarecrow. His head was small, stacked stuffed with straw, his eyes, nose, and mouth painted on to resemble a face. An old pointed blue hat that had belonged to some munchkin was perched upon his head, and the rest of the figure was in a blue suit of clothes, worn on the fade, faded side, which had also been stuffed with straw. On the feet were some old boots that had blue tops, such as every man wore in this country, and the figure was raised above the stalks of corns by means of the pole which stuck up its back. While Dorothy was leaning earnestly into the odd-looking little painted face of the scarecrow, she was surprised to see one of the eyes slowly winking at her. She thought she must be mistaken at first, for none of the scarecrows in Kansas ever winked. But presently the figure nodded its head, to her in a friendly way. Then she climbed down from the fence and walked up to it, while Toto ran around the pole and barked. "'Good day,' said the scarecrow, in a rather husky voice. "'Did you speak?' asked the girl in wonder. Well, "'Certainly,' answered the scarecrow. "'How do you do?' "'I'm pretty well, thank you,' replied Dorothy politely. "'How do you do?' "'I'm not feeling well,' said the scarecrow with a smile for it is this very tedious being perched up here day and night to scare away the crows. Can't you get down? asked Dorothy. No, for this pole is stuck up my back. If you will please take away the pole, I will be greatly obliged to you. Dorothy reached up with both arms and lifted the figure off the pole, for being stuffed, the straw, it was very light. Oh, thank you very much, said the scarecrow when he had been set down on the ground. I feel like a new man. Dorothy was puzzled at this, for it sounded queer to hear a stuffed man speak and to see him bow and walk alongside her. How are you? asked the scarecrow when he had stretched himself and yawned. And uh, where are you going? My name's Dorothy, said the little girl, and I'm going to the Emerald City to see the great Oz to send me back to Kansas. "'Where's the Emerald City?' he inquired. "'And who's Oz?' "'Why, I, I don't know. I, "'Don't you know?' she said with surprise. "'No, indeed, I don't know anything. "'You see, I'm stuffed, so I have no brains at all,' he answered sadly. "'Oh,' said Dorothy, "'I'm awfully sorry for you.' "'Do you think?' he asked. "'Do you think if I, I go to the Emerald City with you "'that Oz would give me some brains?' I cannot tell you, she returned, but you may come with me if you like. If Oz will not give you any brains, you will be no worse off than you are now. Well, that's true, said the scarecrow. You see, he said confidently, I don't mind my legs and arms and body being stuffed, because I cannot be hurt. 
If anyone treads on my toes or sticks a pin into me, it doesn't matter, for I can't feel it. But I do not want people to call me a fool, and my head stays stuffed with straw. Instead of brains, as yours is, how am I ever going to know anything? I understand how you feel, said the little girl, who was truly sorry for him. If you will come with me, I'll ask Oz to do what he can for you. Thank you, he answered gratefully. They walked back down to the road. Dorothy helped him over the fence, and they started along the path of the yellow brick for the Emerald City. Toto did not like this addition to the party at first. He smelled around and sniffed at the man as if suspecting him of something. The man he growled at him in an unfriendly manner. Oh, don't mind him, said Dorothy. He never bites. Oh, I'm not afraid, replied the scarecrow. He can't hurt the straw. Do let me carry that basket for you. Oh, I shall not mind it, for I can't get tired. I'll let tell you a secret, though, he continued as he walked along. There's only one thing in the world I'm afraid of. What is it, said Dorothy, the munchkin farmers who made you? No, nope, said the scarecrow. It's a lighted match. <laughs>